Hi, I'm Boris Rosen. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Dear colleagues, as we know, the phenomenon of spiral philotaxis is the only irrefutable example of the presence of the Fibonacci numbers in nature. Therefore, plant morphogenesis leading to the appearance of patterns of spiral philotaxis is the subject of close attention of all researchers of Fibonacci numbers. What is the phenomenon of spiral philotaxis? First of all, it's beautiful, even very beautiful. And when we start counting spirals, we get the Fibonacci numbers and the golden ratio. Remarkably, we find patterns of spiral philotaxis on plants of various species that are far apart in the list of systems of plant taxonomy. This suggests that very different plants have universal morphogenesis of philotaxis patterns. The problem of morphogenesis of philotaxis patterns has been of concern for several generations of botanists and mathematicians. The vast majority of researchers notes that all types of spiral philotaxis are united by the following fact. The number of visible spirals or helix of one family in 96% are Fibonacci numbers and 3% are other recursive sequences. It is necessary to distinguish between planar, cylindrical, multispiral, and cylindrical one-spiral philotaxis. Now you see planar spiral philotaxis at inflorescence of a sunflower with visible peristiches index 21, 34, 55, cylindrical multispiral philotaxis at pineapple index 8, 13, 21, and scheme of cylindrical spiral philotaxis. As it is known, a plant is a biological object consisting of many cells between which statistical and differential integral mathematical tools. Therefore, a significant part of researchers try to build a model of philotaxis morphogenesis, relying on mathematical methods that were tested in biology and physics. The most prominent of this direction was the outstanding mathematician of our time, Alan Turing, who was one of the fathers of cybernetics. In the early 1950s, Turing published the fundamental article The Chemical Basis of Morphogenesis, devoted to the self-organization of matter and the self-oscillating chemical reactions. At the same time, Turing was keenly interested in the phenomenon of philotaxis and tried to explain it using the same physiochemical methods. Only in 1992, Turing unfinished article Morphogen Theory of Philotaxis was published, in which he tried to explain the appearance of Fibonacci prestiges by self-oscillating nature of chemical reaction in plants. However, the Fibonacci numbers do not arise in solving equations describing self-oscillating processes. The Fibonacci numbers also do not appear in the basic constants in statistics or in differential integral calculus, such as the constant pi arises in trigonometry or E in differential integral calculus. As it is known, recurrent series appear only when solving problems in containing recursion. From this, we can assume that morphology of spiral philotaxis is a recursive process. The foundations of the mechanistic approach of philotaxis morphogenesis were laid by the Bravais Bravais and then continued by Church Jean Levitov. It is also especially necessary to note the research of Adler who formulated the model of content pressure. In the double helix of philotaxis, a hypothesis was put forward that the morphogenesis of philotactic pattern originates from the center of inflorescence, whereby each newborn primordium appears in the center of the inflorescence in the process of morphogenesis moves to the periphery. So we can say that the process of morphogenesis consists of two permanent actions. The appearance of new primordia in the center of influence at irregular intervals, uniform growth of each primordium. As a result of the growth, each primordium creates pressure on the surrounding primordia. According to the laws of physics, the surrounding primordia create the same pressure on each primordium. Also in double helix of helotaxis, it was proved that the resulting vector from the pressure of all primordia on each primordium is directed strictly from the center of inflorescence. The result of this pressure is the movement of each primordium away from the center of inflorescence. 
The recursive dynamic model assumes a recursive repetition of the transition from a flotaxis pattern with n primordia to the pattern with n plus 1 primordia, while each new primordium is added to the center of the inflorescence at regular intervals. Each primordium continuously moves from the center of inflorescence. Each primordium continuously grows, increases in size. The philotaxis pattern preserves the genetic spiral and constant angle of divergence. A cylindrical philotaxis pattern is obtained by stretching a planar pattern along an axis perpendicular to the planar philotaxis and passing through the center of planar pattern. Moreover, the divergence angle is the same and constant. Now we can see the morphogenesis of a planar philotaxis pattern, transforming it into multi-spiral cylindrical pattern, and then stretching into spiral pattern of philotaxis. Based on the dynamic model proposed in the book Double Helix of Philotaxis, this video demonstrates the unity of the morphogenesis of all forms of spiral philotaxis. According to this dynamic model, a new primordium appears at the center of the inflorescence at equal intervals of the time. Moreover, each primordium increases evenly in its size. As new primordia appear and grow, each primordium does pressure on others. As a result of this pressure, each primordium moves in a straight line from the center of the inflorescence. Let's color each new fifth primordium in yellow, each eighth primordium in blue, each 13th in red, and each 21st in green. Also, let's color two successive primordia in cyan. Moreover, the angle between two successive primordia will be constant and equal to the golden angle. Notice how the computer simulation of the dynamic model matches the real philotaxis pattern of the sunflower in Florences. Let's rotate the model around the center of the coordinates. Let's convert the planar 2D view to the isometric 3D view. Let's transform the planar 2D model of philotaxis into the 3D model of philotaxis on the cylinder. To do this, let's pull the center of the pattern up along the vertical axis. Notice how the computer simulation of the dynamic model matches the real philotaxis pattern on a pineapple. Let's continue to stretch the model of philotaxis on the 3D cylinder along the vertical axis. Add the cylinder image. Let's add the genetic spiral that runs through all the primordia. As you could see, the angle between two successive primordia during all transformations remain constant and equal to the golden angle. Notice how the stretched model of philotaxis on the 3D cylinder coincides with the spiral arrangement of leaves on, for instance, a plant shoot. You can clearly see how this primordia lineup in parastiches, the number of which is equal to the Fibonacci numbers. Also, we can see the similarity between philotaxis patterns drawn by the recursive dynamic model at the various stages of morphogenesis and real botanical objects. This is clearly seen when comparing philotaxis patterns on real plant and drawings created by the computer model in the video. Thank you for your attention. I will be happy to answer your questions via email. Thank you.